So in this section, I would like to discuss about the conditional. Okay. When we learn the basic Python, we know that uh, there are some uh, way to do the conditional. For example, we use if. In the pandas, uh, if we want to filter the data with some condition, yeah, then yeah, the data frame provides a conditional function by calling its attribute and put the condition according to the data type. So let's see. If I want to get the data, only the data where the birds, the number of birds is greater than 100. Okay, so this is the conditional with the numerical data. And we put the condition inside the square bracket. Okay, so if uh, maybe if you want to try, okay, if I make a new column here what happened if i do this one the f birds greater than 100 the result will be only boolean okay so the result will be boolean true true false true and true and when we do this one python will check the true result and then if you put that condition inside the square bracket then python will show only the true result okay this is in the case of the numerical data in the case of the categorical data or the text data then you need to specify what is the value that you want to search. So in this case, I would like to find the name that equal to John. Then the data will appear when the name is John. Okay. So yeah, you can uh, have more idea how to deal with the pandas. So let's say yeah, there's one question before. Can we use zip? Uh, can we use zip with more than two columns? Yes, this is the example. Okay. So let's suppose I have name. Yeah, the names are these elements. And then I have the heads, like this element. And then I have weights, I have these elements. And then I have the variable profile data set that is the combination between those three columns. Okay, and yeah, if you run this, so you will go to the next. Okay, can you answer this one? Okay, so uh, I will not discuss now. Okay, so you can try by yourself. So try number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, six, seven, okay. And as I mentioned to you, yeah, you can see the, the, there are some students who got three and one. So next week, okay, next week I will call your name is on this low score. And then I will ask you to show me your result from this one. Okay, so you need to share your screen and then show me the result of this one. Okay, can you understand? Okay, so now I did I will not show the name. Okay, I know the student's name. Okay, but yeah, next week I will call your name and please show me what can you do with this one. You don't maybe yeah if you can do all that's good. If you cannot do all at least you can do some numbers then this also fine it's not that difficult okay if you understand this one i think yeah it will be very good for you okay then i think this is the end of this uh week two
about the Python introduction. So I will move on to the next chapter, which is about the exploratory data analysis. Yeah. Uh, before doing this one, I guess I have one data set, which is iris data. Okay. So if you take a look on the material section, I give one file, iris.csv. Okay. So I will use that file for our course. So you can, uh, in my case, I have this folder. So I put all the notebook files. I put the IPYNB files in one folder. And I would like to teach you to separate between the figures. I think you already know the figures. I already teach you how to separate this one. And I want to make one more folder. And the folder is related to the data. Okay. So when you have the data, any data which is maybe in the CSV or any other format, you can save it in this folder data. Okay, so it means the folder will be clean, and it only contain the IPYNB. Okay. Okay, so please make one folder data and then put the iris.csv, so csv is the simpuro gubunduan cup file. Okay, let's start with the EDA section. So this chapter, uh, we would like to discuss about the exploratory data analysis. So we will learn about the basic statistics descriptive, and yeah, we will learn about the categorical data, continuous data, and some basic statistics descriptive like the basic aggregation function and how we can read the data from file. So we already took a look on the previous example, how to read, how to understand the categorical data and continuous data. And we are going to use one data set for this chapter. And the next, uh, maybe in the next session, not today, we will learn about the bar chart, line chart, histogram, box plot, and other chart. Then for the advanced visualization, we will learn the joint plot, pet plot, RM plot, and heat map. So what are they? Yeah, we will learn for those. Uh, so the sequence, uh, we will check uh, all the important functions, okay. so in NumPy and Pandas, okay, and uh, we will run the EDA functions. So what are the EDA functions? We will take a look on this. First, yeah, we call NumPy and Pandas. Okay, so when you do your assignment or when you do your exam, yeah, you need to import all the uh, important libraries. At least NumPy and Pandas will be necessary for your uh, exam and for your assignment. So in this example, we will use one of the popular data set that is Iris. Okay. This is one of the popular data set and uh, we can get this Iris data set in the UCI ML repository. So this is the machine learning repository. And the Iris data set or the Iris flower data set, it is called also Fisher Irish data. It was introduced by the British statistician and biologist Ronald Fisher. So he uh, got, he collect this data as one of his paper to explain about the method linear discriminant analysis. So the data on length and width of petal and sepal leaf, leaf, leaf sorry, was actually collected by American botanist Edgar Anderson to quantify the morphology variation of iris flower. And there are three related species. So we are going to use this data set, the iris data set. Okay. So first you need to use the existing libraries and import the data from the libraries. So some libraries, uh, 
like the sklearn, seaborn, or other libraries, they provide the data. So you can just took the data from that libraries. Or we can use link in the cloud repository. Uh, maybe not today, but I will teach you how to use this link to get the data from the UCI repository or to the uh, other kind of data set. Yeah. Or we can use the CSV file. So CSV is comma separated value. So I will teach you how to use this CSV at the end of this uh, Jupyter Notebook. So for this example, let's use the import function from one library that is Seaborn. Seaborn is one of the library for the data visualization. Okay. So we will use it as well later. Okay. This is also the tool for the data visualization. We can use this for the data visualization. And uh, when we want to get the data, we need to use the sns.set. Okay. So here, sns means the seaborn. And then we want to see the data set in the function set. So wait a moment. Okay, so after I run this one, and I need to get the data. So the SNS means the Seaborn library, and we are going to load the data set, which is Iris. And I want to put this data set into the variable Iris. After I run this, yeah, I would like to explain the data set itself. We have three kind of flower. The first type of flower is Iris setosa. The second type of flower is Iris versicolor. And the, sec the third type is Iris virginica. So the specification of the data, it depends on the sepal and the petal. So sepal is this one. This is the, the leaf. Okay, the leaf, uh, the leaf with this shape is the sepal, and the leaf with this shape is the petal. Okay. And they have the measure for length and width. So they have the sepal length and width, and they have also the petal length and width. So we have the petal length, sepal length. We have petal width and sepal width. And based on those information, we can figure out whether it is iris setosa or versicolor or virginica based on this data. So I would like to see the information. Okay. So based on this information, uh, we have five attributes. Okay. The first attribute is sepal length. The second is sepal width. The third is petal length, petal width, and species. And the data type for the sepal length is float. Do you still remember what is float? Dot. <laughs> okay, with decimal. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe yeah, it's difficult to express. So real number. Okay, that's good. Okay, yeah, that's a good expression. Real number. Okay. Uh, yeah, usually we call the real number. If the number without comma. Okay, so this is numbers with decimal. Okay. If the number without decimal, we call it natural number. 
okay so this is the integer the one that yeah we already already use also so if it is float then it is a real number with decimal and 64 is only the size okay and we have the object for the species so it defines the float 64 there are four and the object uh, is one and the range index is 150 there are 150 data and the index is from zero until 149 we have five column okay so if i want to see the first five data yeah you already know from the previous example we use that dot head we can see the first five data if we describe so we can see only the numerical data summary so the sepal length sepal width petal length petal width there are 150 data and we can see the mean the standard deviation minimum 25 percent 50 percent 75 percent and maximum okay so you can see that the mean the average of petal width is very low and for the sepal length is the highest among the other variables if we want to see only the numerical yeah we can also use this one include np.number to describe the numerical data summary okay. if we want to see only the text or the object okay. Um, okay, I think no problem because now they are uh, improving the NumPy. So there are some NP object like this one uh, has been duplicated. Okay. Duplicated means uh, we don't need to define with NP dot, so you can just use object, but basically it's the same. Okay, then we can see here yeah, the species here we have 150 and the unique there are three okay there are three unique so we know that uh, the 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 flower we have three which is setosa virginica and versicolor so okay there's one question describe np number is the same order compared to describe yes that's right yeah it's the same but if we want to specify, for example, if we have many columns, okay, and let's say I just want to describe only the column number two and number three, which are the NP number, yeah, then yeah, it's useful. But if you want to check all, yeah, you can just use describe, no problem. Okay, thank you for your question. The top is Setosa. Okay, so. Yeah, as I mentioned to you, this top is, uh, yeah, in this case, it is like random because all the data has the same frequency, 50. And we want to see the data types. I think this is the same with the info. You can see the float 64 and then the, op the object. Okay. And if you want to find the index, yeah, we also see this one in the info. There are 150, the index starting from zero and stop at 150, the step is one. Okay. And if we want to see the columns, okay, so there are five columns, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and species. <clears throat> if you want to know the shape, okay, so let's say if I have question, how can I know the dimension of the data? Then yeah, you can use the iris shape and then you can give the answer. The dimension of the data, there are 150 rows and five columns. Okay. So I show you this one. Uh, so later, maybe yeah, after Chusok, I will give you like one assignment and then yeah, once I give you question, you need to give the answer with this kind of explanation. Okay. So 
if I ask you, how can I know the dimension of the data? If you only answer like this, uh, there will be some minus on your point because yeah, I will need your explanation also. Okay. If you want to show all the data, okay. So like uh, like what I said before in the previous example, we have only five rows. So when you call the data frame, it's just only five rows. But here we have 150 rows. So when you call the variable, yeah, you can see the, the Python want to show all, but because of the size limitation, they skip some part. You know, so they put the dot, 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 and then they show the remaining five elements, uh, the last five elements. Okay? So this is the first five elements, and this is the last five elements. And yeah, you can check only the data related to one attribute. So for example, I want to see the iris sepal length. Then yeah, you can see only the data from the sepal length. And we have the, uh, there are 150 data and the type is float. If I want to see the data, from the species, and I want to see only the setosa. Okay. So the setosa will be the string, and we will put the equal sign and check for the iris with the column species. And then put this one into the square bracket to indicate that we want to get the data frame only for setosa. Okay, so this is only for the setosa. Maybe this one is not, yeah, you can see. Yeah, it is too long. Okay. Yeah, so there are 50 data. So they, this Python will show it, will print. Okay, so if I run, yeah, it's just like this one. And if you want to give condition, okay, the same with the previous one. Uh, let's say I know that the sepal length, uh, uh, okay, let's say this is just an example. I have the sepal length, which is less than six. Okay, so we have 150 data before. We have 150 data. And then among 150 data, 80 data are having the sepal length, which is less than six. Okay. There are some uh, aggregation functions. Okay. Uh, when we are dealing with the aggregation functions, uh, we use the NumPy, okay? uh, but I cannot do all. So we will just do some important uh, aggregation functions. And there are some NAN. Okay? What is NAN? NAN means the not a number. Okay? Not a number, usually it is expressed by uh, null value. Okay. or it is uh, missing value. So we will learn about the missing value. Okay. Additionally, most aggregates have NAN safe counterpart that computes the result while ignoring missing values. Okay. And which are marked by special IEEE floating point, NAN value. So this is a special value from the standard uh, from the I triple E, and yeah, we will discuss further about the missing value in different section. Some of these NAN safe functions were not added until NumPy 1.8. So if you are doing uh, this Jupyter notebook with the older NumPy, I recommend you to update. 
the NumPy version. Okay. For example, like this one, np.sum. Okay. So we want to aggregate the data. So we want to sum, do summation on the data. If the data contain any NAN, so you need to use np.nan sum. The product mean okay, and so on. So it's the same. Product means multiplication. Okay. Mean means the average. Okay. So yeah, I can type dot. Yeah, it is the multiplication. So if I have like uh, all the data, uh, maybe the data is one, three, four, five, six, uh, two, six, like this one. So it means I want to get the product, then I want to get the result one multiplied by three, multiplied by four, multiplied by five, multiplied by two, multiplied by six, like this one. Okay. And yeah, mean I want to get the average. If the data contain any null or any n, then you need to use this np dot n mean. And so on, you can take a look on this one. Okay. So we have like this argument, argument mean, argument max, median, percentile, any and all. Okay. Uh, I will not discuss all the things, but I will just discuss some important function from this one. Let's say uh, after I got the result, the iris sepal length that is less than six. I want to see the mean from all the numerical attributes. Then, yeah, we can see like this one. The sepal length is 5.2, the sepal width is 3, the petal length is 2, and the petal width is 0 0.7. This is the data where the sepal length is less than six. Okay. If I want to know the median, okay. Yeah, I, I will not explain here about the mean median. I hope that you already know this one. Okay. If I want to know the median or the mid value, then yeah, I can use just dot median. If I want to know the minimum value, so I can just dot min. And then this is the minimum value. If I want to see the maximum, so I can use this one. If I want to do the summation, so every data here that satisfy with the condition, we will do the summation. So we can just use dot sum. Okay. You see here in the species, yeah, it's not correct. Okay. So if you want to properly show the summation, you know, maybe you need to select only the numerical attributes. So that's the aggregation function from the uh, from the data frame, and we can use the NumPy. Okay, what we already uh, used before. It was from the data frame from the panda. Okay. Now, if we want to use the NumPy, it means all should be in the number because NumPy is the numerical. Uh, value okay and if we are doing with the numpy yeah we want to put all the value as an array let's see i would like to put this one okay and you want to use this into the uh, array and okay you can take a look here we still include the set posa Okay. Oh, how can it be? 
yes that's fine because we put all the data into the array so this array will indicate the object as an object but we cannot do more things in the numpy okay so we need to uh, do like we can select only the proper data and this one for the operation like the min minimum median okay so we need to eliminate this one later but yeah, we want to change this data frame or we want to change this uh, series data into the array numpy So our, if yeah, select the attribute sepa length from the array that you extracted previously. So let's say I want to just use the sepa length. Okay. So I want to use the sepa length into the numpy. So I have the sepa length. The sepa length is only the data related to the sepa length. And this is from the numpy. And yeah, the same with the aggregation function. I can use the minimum. I can use the argument minimum. What does it mean? What is the difference between minimum and then the argument minimum? index value okay so basically yeah that's correct we want to find the index we want to find the index where the minimum value is located okay so i will tell you the number is 13 and what is the minimum value 4.3 so let's see from this data So we can check this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. The minimum is 4.3 and the index equals to 13. So we want to get the index number where the value is the minimum. Okay. Yeah, it's the same with uh, the other uh, kind of function. If you take a look, uh, when I explain this one, you have the argument max. Or argument max. What is the meaning by argument max? So we want to find the maximum value oh, sorry we want to find the index of the maximum value okay okay i hope that it will help you to understand about this uh, eda so uh, more about the data file um, when you have uh, your pandas we can use the autocomplete okay so you can press tap after typing the pd okay what does it mean uh, let me show you so if you have pd okay you know the tap keyboard tap okay yeah. so you can press dot and then you can press tap when you press this one, then it will show you all the function that might be used for your code. Okay. So if you, for example, oh, I forgot, what is this one? Okay, so, oh, okay, you can just dot and then do the tap like this. Oh, wait, can I show this one? Okay, so if you forgot, then you just dot and tap. Yeah, you can see all the possible methods for this one. So for example, oh, I forgot what is the read, read, oh, maybe read, aha, yes, I know, read CSV, okay? 
So something like this one, yeah, you can use the tap. The data sources vary according to the domain. So for example, if you are using your database, okay, the data can be extracted from a database or a data warehouse. So I will not teach you about the data warehouse here. Uh, maybe after you join the data mining, you will know what is the data warehouse. Right? So we can use SQL, we can use any kind of other languages. In other domain, we can extract the data using unstructured data documents such as JSON. So I will also give you one example how to use the JSON file later. Uh, however, many data analysis perform the analysis using tabular format such as CSV or comma separated value, or some of them use Excel or some of them use TSV, tab separated values, or maybe some of them they use text file. So if you are using the JSON file, there is a method read under bar JSON. If you are using the query from the database, you can use read SQL query. If you are using the CSV, yeah, you can use the read under bar CSV. And in the read under bar CSV, there are some variants whether you want to separate the values with semicolon, or you want to separate the value with space, or you want to separate the value with tab. Do you know tab? Tab is more than one space. Okay, so the space is more than one. So note that you can also write the data into some of the file format. So like this one, yeah, this is the detail. You can see that there are many data files. You can use CSV. If you are reading the file, then you can use read CSV. If you want to write into CSV, then you will specify to CSV. There's another kind of file fixed with text file. Okay. A JSON file, so you can use read JSON, or if you want to write it is to JSON, HTML, local clipboard, Excel, and so on. Okay, so if you are using the HDF5 format, so it is like the HDF for the big data, yeah, you can also read this one, and yeah, like pickle format. Uh, now, this there are many uh, data scientists also use this pickle format with the binary format or the read SQL or the Google BigQuery data. So you can use this one as well. Okay, so I give you those functions. If you want to explore later with your, um, maybe now you already prepare for your uh, team project idea, then you can also consider those functions to get your data. Okay. Uh, for this course, I will focus mostly on CSV. Okay, so uh, maybe for the, the modeling, I will use mostly for the CSV file. But in the data pre-processing, uh, I will explore more like the JSON, and I will also explore more like the uh, I will maybe there, there are some SQL in that part. So if you are using the file, okay, I mentioned to you uh, we have the iris data, uh, yeah, you can put, as I mentioned to you, you can put your data in the specific folder in your uh, Jupyter Notebook folders. So in this case, I have folder data and I put this iris CSV here. So the way to read the data is PD, this is the pandas, and then I use the read CSV and then yeah, I call the folder name. The folder name is data. And then I put the slash to indicate what is the file name that I want to extract. So once you call this one, then yeah, you can do the same what we already did before. 
So Iris head, so we can see the first five data and so on. You can explore. Okay. And I also gave you the possible data set. So if you click this one, so there are many data sets are available in the internet. And yeah, you can figure out what kind of data set that fits with you for this exploration. Okay. And of course, uh, yeah, you still have time before doing the uh, proposal for your final project, but time is very fast. Yeah. So you can take a look on this data set. If you think that there are good data set for you, maybe if you are now dealing with finance or with stock, you, know, you can use this data set. If you want to know more about the GIS, you can use this, this data set and so on. Okay. Okay, that's the end of this uh, basic EDA. So I will move on to the second one. So, sorry. Data visualization. Okay. So in this section, we are going to learn about the uh, basic visualization. Okay. Uh, for the visualization, I think I will just give you the basic like bar chart, line chart, histogram, box plot, and some uh, other chart like stack bar chart, dog bar chart, and etc. As I mentioned to you, don't forget to import. Okay? So when you do any uh, task assignment, first you need to import the library. NumPy and the pandas will be the basic one. And yeah, for this, I will use the Seaborn and I will use the data set from this Seaborn. So I call the set to get the data set. And yeah, let's just use Iris data set for this example. In this example, in this file, I would like to explain about one of the popular uh, library for the visualization, which is matplotlib. And actually we can also do the visualization with Seaborn. So matplotlib is a comprehensive library for creating static animated and interactive visualization in Python. So if you want to know more, yeah, you can take a look on this uh, website. Okay? So they uh, have many examples. So if you want to know how to deal with this kind of pretty visualization, yeah, you can take a look on this one. So it provides an object-oriented API. So we are uh, just learning about the basic Python. So the matplotlib, they provide the API so you can use and you can embed it in your application. And the application also connected to the uh, GUI in Python like TK, Tinker, and yeah, this one. And there's an OpenGL. It is related to another kind of software like uh, we can use also MATLAB, but maybe the result is not that pretty good. Okay. And also the SciPy, they also use this MATLAB. So this is the way to extract the MATLAB. We call the MATLAB and we call the PyPlot SPLT. This is the short of the MATLAB and we need to use this as the inline. Okay, I guess this is the time to stop because of the quiz and I will stop here.